Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we'll look into a special kind of vulnerabilities called as the client injection vulnerabilities, right? Uh, very popular ones again, you know, you find them a lot in the web, in web uh, application pen testing as well. Um, and since, you know, Android uses a lot of SQLite based databases, we, uh, we find a lot of such injections available in most of the apps as well, right? So, <clears throat> Android, yeah, uses uh, SQLite databases for storing application data. Um, you know, most of the apps, they store sensitive information in databases. So we need to sanitize the user input before applying the SQL queries, right? So to test this, let's um, take pick up a vulnerable application called as the SQLite app, right? Which means I already have it over here. Sorry. Right, the SQLite app is here. Let me just go down and install this app right away. There you go. So I've installed this app, which means it should be seen here. Yeah, there you go. This is the app, right? So what do we do first? Let's go and register, right? To register, let's register with the username of Tom. Uh, maybe let's put as Tom. Email address being Tom at xyz.com. Password being, I don't know, let's put password as uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Username is again Tom. Password is, wait, this wasn't password, is it? This was phone number, sorry. So, phone number is again 41s, 42s, 34. Okay, so that'll be the phone number. Password is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So, let's give this as the password. Great, so let's submit and we have registered, right? Now, Imagine we forgot the password, right? So we don't know one, two, three, four, five, six is the password. We don't know the password. So how would you log in, right? If I put any gibberish password and try to log in, the app will keep on telling you the login failed, right? So how do you bypass this? Okay. So to do that, first let's, uh, you know, uh, decompile the app using D2J this time, right? So let's do that. Let's. Uh, we are in this folder, so let's decompile it using d2j dex2jar, right? And the name of the app is sqlite.pk, right? So the decompiling has started, the decompiling has finished. Now let's go to my Santoku VM, let's go down here and uh, let's go to the terminal. Right, let's go to the terminal. Let's go to CD desktop, vulnerable right, apps, and uh, let's use uh, the JD GUI. JD GUI to um, to uh, view the jar file which got created just now. Right, so SQLite this particular jar. Right, so it's going to be to jar there you go so this is the whole file right uh, this is the whole source code of our uh, app right which we decompiled just now great so now if you look at here right you have a lot of you have all the source code here let's pick up this particular Java file which is database connector if you look at this database connector this is the place where the login is happening it says Select all from user records where username is this and password is this, right? Now, if you view carefully here, you know, this is uh, prone to SQL injection, right? Because there is no sanitation of the user input happening here. Whatever user input is provided is directly used here, right? So let's use uh, a very simple kind of, a, you know, SQL injection now, right? So we, we, we have, we probably, you probably would have done this kind of SQL injection before as well. So if you view carefully here, uh, there is a quote which opens up here, right? So we'll have to close that quote, right? So again, let's go to the app and, uh, you know, let's replace this Tom. Let's remove this Tom. Password could be anything, any, uh, you know, random thing. It doesn't matter. But what we are going to do is in the username, we will, uh, you know, let's uh, put in some dummy value to start with. Let's put one, right? Let's close the quotation. Let's close the opening which was started because of this right and let's put an or statement or okay 
and I think one equals one should work now one equals one and right so one equals one is basically a logically always true right so um, we put that and let's also comment the rest of it like this right so uh, I think that should work so what happens right let me actually explain to you by taking this whole query here so if I take this and put it in the leaf pad so if this is the query right so what did we do just now we removed all of this I mean let's so we are trying to supply the parameter over here for param1 right so what we are doing is we are putting in so we are basically uh, we took this and we put this as right we put this as this right so when we substitute this parameter over here what happens is the whole uh, query kind of uh, ends up being right so this is how it ends up being and uh, as a result of this this statement will always be false I mean uh, you know there might not be any username in the app with the username of one but because the other part of the statement is true right and these two lines or these two ticks over here are going to uh, comment off the rest of the statement right as a result of that you know um, this becomes always true and as a result you know the app will let us in so let's try this so I have put this and the password doesn't matter it could be anything right I'm gonna hit enter and you can see the user details which is Tom and all of that you know it has successfully logged us inside right so that's a very uh, simple way of doing uh, SQL injection uh, you know it might not be always this simple I mean one equals one might not work or you might have to rework the codes and all of that but this is um, an example of doing SQL injection right uh, and this is the process right you take the app you see if there is a uh, if there if, if the app is trying to take in any inputs and then you try to decompile look into the source code see uh, you know if you can inject something then go and try those injections and uh, most of the times it will start working right so uh, thanks a lot for watching that was SQL injection